It is 6.01, and I'm calling this meeting to order the Planning and Zoning Commission. Today is January the 20th of 2022. The first item is a roll call. We're missing one. Oh, Garcia. there he is. <laughs> I knew he had it. All right. Roll call, please. Present. Jorge Rodriguez. Present. Mike Barron. Present. Abraham Lugo. Present. Janine Arvarez. Hussein Hussein Juan. Larry Dovalina. Daniela Salapat. Ana Julia Real. Present. Mr. Chairman, for the record, you have quorum, and I was asked by Mr. Narvaez if he could speak to excuse, along with Ms. Wang and Mr. Dovalina and Ms. Alpha. They all request ex to be excused. Motion aye. to excuse. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Can everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And the republic for which it stands, yeah. one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh. All right. Next item that we have is the approval of the minutes. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman. We would ask that uh, that we had a, a typo. We'd like to see if we could table the the action to approve the minutes till the next meeting. Fine. Can we have a motion to table? Table. A motion. We have a second. Second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next item. Do we have anybody signed up for citizens' comments? No, sir. All right. Moving into public hearings. Uh, first public hearing is amending the zoning ordinance of the city of Laredo by rezoning lot one, part of lot two, block 1696 Eastern Division, located at 2801 East Mustard. Mustard, I'm sorry. From R3 to B1. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, we have the applicant, Griselda um, Elena Cisneros, owner, property location. Lot 1 and part of Lot 2, Block 1696, Eastern Division, located at 2801 Eastern Mustard Street. Zone change request, R3 to B1, proposed use, daycare, letter sent 23, for none, against none. Location view. This is a public hearing, you have a chance to speak. Not, not, not yet. yet. But Anyway. I will call you up. Yes. Right. Aerial view. Street view. Zoning map. Future land use map. Future land use map and the staff recommendation is staff support and the proposed motion. Okay. All right. This is a public hearing. Anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the zone change, in favor of the zone change. Yes, ma'am. Come on up. <clears throat> 
Oh, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Griselda Elena Cisneros y estoy a favor este, de reasignar la zona de, que se está mencionando de un R3 a un B1 por el propósito de una guardería, un daycare. Este, y estoy a, abierta a, la, a las preguntas que me quieran hacer. Okay. Have any for her from the Quick question. Uh, what is the property? How is it being used currently? Uh, era clínica médica. Okay. Mm -hmm. ¿Y ahorita está funcionando la clínica? No. Está vacío. Ya está vacío, vacío okay. desde hace un año y medio más o menos. ¿Y alguna vez tuvieron uh, problemas con estacionamiento o alguna, algún uh, problema? No sé, no te sabré decir porque okay. yo tengo más o menos un año, dos meses que compré esa propiedad okay. y ha estado vacía. Ok, gracias. Una preguntita, atrás de la oficina de, que era de, doctor, de un doctor, ¿verdad? ¿Hay apartamentos atrás? Hay cuatro apartamentos atrás. Ok, ¿y los estacionamientos para esos apartamentos están atrás? Están atrás, sí. Ok, porque, este, would you know how many spaces a daycare is going to be needing? At the moment, uh, no, sir. Ok. Uh, I don't have any more questions. For, for reference, uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe this was at one time a doctor's office that was the, the city, uh, was a city doctor or something of that nature back in the day. Yeah. I, I don't have Dr. Cruz. Or, I don't have any other questions for the applicant, but I do have some questions for staff. Well, go ahead, ask the staff. All right, can we put up the uh, zoning map again for this area? I just want to see where the, where the, any other, uh, additional B1s are in this area. And then. No, sir, but I, you, would you prefer so, a Google map up there? Well, I, ha I have one here if you, if you need one. Put it up. Okay. So, you want to get that and put it up? Okay. Oh, it's the same oh, sorry. You've got the same. Here. Sorry. Put a large overview map in your packet. A little bit wider. Yeah. Well, if you, if you see there, I think the next P1 is up on Clark Boulevard. If you can kind of zoom in on the north side of the map there, and then the other B1 would be next to um, what is Lamar Middle School, which is the gas station. So both those B1s right now are gas stations. I would I'm assuming. So it's pretty fairly dense in in, in R3. And right across this property, I believe it's it's R1. So I don't know if staff considered maybe a condition a use permit for the area, just because of the parking. Because the concern is parking, and then I think the overflow of parking would probably go into the church across this property, because uh, I think it's a it's an abandoned it's no longer there, right? I think the church across the street is is in that area. So if you if you look at this, Arkansas Street. If you were to go north, you'd see heavier commercial on both sides of, of the street. Right. Um, that services the neighborhoods in the area. Right. In the comprehensive plan that we have, there was there's uh, there's a calling for more walkability, more services to the neighborhood right. um, with zones like this. Right. Oh, and this is specific to along Arkansas. And the way Arkansas is designed. Well, we know what Arkansas is. The thoroughfare is considered. Was it a, a, a uh, type of road? Just because I think maybe with the condition of this permit, it's a little bit e um, easier to to look at this area. Although staff, I know it's recommended, well, I, recommending I think, approval, but Mike, I think what the, what the directors is, is, is under the new comprehensive plan. Yeah. They're looking at mixed uses within the neighborhoods now, okay? Right. So that's why when they're bringing this forth, it's part of the comprehensive plan's new vision of mixed uses in, in residential areas. Yeah. If I may. Yes, sir, Commissioner Dominguez. Um, I agree with Commissioner Barron, except that uh, we're going one step uh, higher than the R3. And uh, the... Uh, the, the daycares usually will not take a lot of uh, parking because uh, they they actually they in and out yes they actually 
take care of the kids, they drop them, and then they leave. Uh, I believe that, uh, not, not to be against your comment, uh, Commissioner. No, no, that's I fine. I think it was a good comment. Right. Uh, but I feel that uh, going up on the B1, it's, it's appropriate, because if we were to go on B3 or B4, then we would create uh, something that is completely separate that might impact the, uh, the, right. the area of the community. Yeah. But I think a B1, is, it's, a, it's appropriate at this time. The, the only concern is, is the amount of space for, for, I know I understand for a daycare it works well, but that's why I'm saying a conditional use permit would work. But if you look at any other higher intensity type of a development, if for some reason someday that happens there, which is either, I don't know, another gas station or a tattoo parlor or, or a restaurant or whatever it may be, will it be able to, to sustain the, the parking and for that area, uh, that that's that's the other thing, you know. That, I, I think the key know. there is is based on whatever the business is, they must comply with the minimum requirements of the uh, development ordinance. Right. So whatever the, I don't know what the minimum requirement is for this particular business. I don't remember. I don't remember right off the top of my head, but they must meet those requirements. Not only from local but state. As a daycare? Well, state. parking requirements are local. Right. Okay? But that's what I'm saying. We're talking about the daycare. I'm talking about right. any, any other type of business. Well, it's the same there. thing. You change use, and you've got to meet the parking requirement, whatever that use is. That, that's why I'm saying that. Yeah. That's... The other, the other uh, on an R3, R3s are very liberal. <coughs> so you can actually put mobile homes on an R3. Mm -hmm. You know, A B1 is more controlled. In, in the in the use that you could use there on an R3, okay. there's a variety of uses that can go in there legally. Right. And so that, that's also continue. concerned. Anybody else have any questions? All right. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who wishes to speak in favor of the zone change? In favor of the zone change. Anybody who wishes to speak against the zone change? Against the zone change? Yes. Come on up. All right. Good evening. I am oh, here. It's right in the center. Under it. Good evening. I am Adriana Padilla, and I'm very opposed to the proposed zoning change from an R3 to a B1 at 2801 East Musser Street. About 15 to 20 years ago, the first attempt to change the zoning of this designated area occurred. My neighbors, my mother, and I opposed this change back then. Again, on December 18, 2014, my brother, Robert, and I, and along with other neighbors, Start, stood here to fight this proposed change. When my parents decided to build a home back in 1960, along with other young couples, it was because they wanted to raise children in a peaceful neighborhood conducive for them to grow in. There are reasons to my opposition. First of all, the traffic on Arkansas Street is already congested. By changing the zoning to allow a childcare, daycare center, or any type of other business to move in would certainly increase the amount of traffic. There are also apartments, as you stated, and located in this property. The main building has a van already parked there with the business label affixed to it, without a doubt, which will be used to transport children from schools to the daycare at peak traffic times. As it is, it's already hard to get out of my driveway as, as the, also the neighbors, and you cannot even cross Arkansas Street during traffic uh, peak times. Also, if at one point the owners decide to sell this property and it has been designated a B1 zone area, multiple types of businesses can be established here. I have seen the list of permitted uses of businesses that can be established in a B1 zoned area from the City of Laredo Land Development Codebook. These types of businesses would impact the homes surrounding this area, more traffic, more vehicles, unsightliness, and loss of curb appeal. Without a doubt, this proposed change will definitely lead to the degradation and integrity of the residential area in the Heights area. I do not want my property or the properties of other homeowners in this area to lose value, or on the other hand, to have a higher taxing rate. I'm neither willing to have the value of my property go down, nor, am I want, do, nor do I want to be forced out of a home. I've lived there for 62 years or more because someone has a desire to change the makeup of the zone area. I have a right as a taxpayer and homeowner to have this residential area remain as it is presently so, and I find one final comment. I teach reading on the site, and sequencing is an important skill that everyone should know in order to function in life. 
why did these property owners work in reverse? It would have behooved them to research or inquire about the zoning status prior to initiating this renovation. They had been renovating this property over the course of several months. And I was not sure of what the intended use was going to be until I saw the van there, until I, see, I saw the signage going up. I sincerely hope that the recommendation of the City of Laredo Planning Department to the members of the City Council will be that no change be made to my residential area. This is the third battle I've gone through. And the church is not abandoned. They have renovated. And that is permitted under R3. But other, if they decide to sell one of these states, it could turn into anything. Do they have possible. spillover from that property over when to the church? When it was belonged to the doctor, it was horrible. They used to, they had to block it off. The church had to block it off. People parked on my side. They left diapers, they left trash, they left everything there. I've lived through this for over 20 years. Other members of the neighborhood, uh, we have letters there um, against and my uh, other neighbor will speak to that. Any questions I may answer? Does anybody have any questions? And I studied that zone book and I pulled out every piece of information I could. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak against? Yes, ma'am. I live in 2720 Messer, and the reason that I opposed for, for this um, is because I went ahead and I, I gathered information from my neighbor. Who do I go ahead and give this to? Sure. These are all, can I approach? Yes. Here you go. This is all the different neighbors that are opposing to this. Okay. Let me just get all these people in here. Give me a second. And also the other reason that I'm opposing to this is because in Halloween, um, they had an event where they were issuing out candies to the children and a lady and a child almost got run over because of the congestion of the traffic. So like as in, I don't know how you all are gonna approve of this, of a daycare, but I know how the traffic is by our, our area. It is horrible every single morning. So like as in the rezoning, it, won't, it wouldn't, be a good idea. So you have the, uh, let me ask you, that's about six letters there from uh, mm -hmm. residents, right? Yes. Immediately uh, close to this property, if I'm not serious. Within the 200 foot radius. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We were just missing one letter, but she was out of town. Okay. So all these people received the letter, the notification about this. Some of them didn't, some of them didn't. How many of these one were? Of them, right? with May I make a comment? Yes. I I have a comment for our staff. Um, I just want to understand the property right now. So, so right now the property in question, it already has an apartment complex operating. Yes, there. because um, uh, Dr. Peña used to have his little mess. Um, we That's another situation that we had before. Dr. Peña had like all these mentally challenged people uh -huh. and those mentally challenged people were, were getting treatment there and they would escape there. And numerous times we had to call the ambulance and we had to call police and all that. Okay, so right now there's already, a, a, I guess, an apartment complex operating and then they're gonna have- A daycare. A daycare. How big is the daycare? Does it specify? Can I go ahead and take off or? Right? Yeah, yes, thank you. Yes. Okay. This is all for staff. Thank you. Thank you. The question, please? So, so they have a, how many units? is already operating as a, a apartment right now. Do we know? Um, I think they said four, four apartments. <coughs> Son cuatro apartments. Papás llegan y dos segundos, a mí en tres minutos, cuatro minutos es lo más que se tardan. Uh -huh. No, nunca ha habido ningún accidente. Este, no, no sé qué es lo que están tratando de hacer las señoras, pero no se ha visto ningún accidente y ya tengo cinco años en esa propiedad 
y es a la siguiente cuadra, y es más chiquito, más reducido, enfrente de esta propiedad están ocho para estacionamiento para los customers y cinco para la, para en, a un lado y seis más para atrás para los apartamentos. So, es suficiente uh, el espacio que tienen lo, la, uh, las personas que van a estar ahí, ¿verdad?, para entrar y salir. Y yo tengo ya tres años viviendo enseguida sí. y nunca he tenido problemas para entrar el, a la calle de Arkansas. ¿Y el daycare qué tan grande lo va a hacer? Uh, pues no sé qué tanto tiene que este, ir a, a checarlo, ¿verdad? No sé qué tanto... Pero es que no, no sabe más o menos, dice que ya tiene un negocio. Bueno, si, si yo diría, sí. ¿verdad? Serían este, la capacidad, me imagino, como para 50 niños. Ok. So, I guess for staff, since this is all going to be shared, uh, the parking situation is going to be considering the already apartment that's there and then and then is there a way that we can calculate now like they're anticipating 50 uh, members or, or children that's going to be a, a building department okay issue that they'll be they'll be looking at it um the parking that that we have uh, that we show on our system <laughs> it's one for every 400 square feet and the drop-off lane uh needs to be sufficient for three cars and that's that's what we have on there but still the, the building department will have to. So, so like, let's say we approve now and then it comes back later that the building department says it, it doesn't need it, then, then what, we've already, we've already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. That's correct. Habló con la ciudad de la mejor un permiso condicional instead of cambiando la zona. No, no he hablado de eso. Me mandaron directamente a hacer esto. El, el cambio de zona, cambio no de necesariamente zona. si estaba interesada en un, este, un permiso condicional, o sea, es ah. un poquito más diferente, o sea, que te dicen las horas de operación, eh, este, el signage, uh, things like that. Me dieron esa uh, sugerencia, pero como es uh, propiedad mía, ¿verdad? Entonces uh -huh. me, me sugirieron mejor, vamos a cambiar, que te lo cambien de, de zona, de, de reajustar la zona a un permiso uh, temporal o permiso especial, creo. Sí, condicional, sí. Yes. sí. Un permiso condicional. Uh -huh. okay. Y ahorita, ¿cuántos estacionamientos tiene la propiedad en total? En total, 19. 19. So, with, right now, just taking that as, as face value, 19 with the apartment unit, Um, does it, to me it sounds like there might actually be an issue with the parking, am I correct or? It really depends on the square footage of the building. It, you know, to go inside and get the square footage to actually determine that, you know, this is a, a zone case, yeah. uh, not necessarily. If I may, Mr. Chairman, real quick. Oh, yeah. I, I think that uh, we're bouncing the ball around. Um, I feel that And maybe uh, the owner might want to table the item and, and, and meet with, with staff and try to get what Commissioner Barron is thinking about a conditional use permit that would uh, kind of speed it out and, and solve it for her and for the residents in a way that they will not have a, a zone change, but uh, the lady will still be uh, benefit by the, by the daycare and we will limit that to the daycare. Consideraría este table it o sea, dejarlo ahorita este, eh, si table para que se junte con, con staff y de esa manera, si votamos en contra o a favor, o sea, si se vota en contra, ya estuvo. Pero si votamos, si, si usted lo, lo guarda ahorita en table, usted todavía tiene la opción de ir a con staff y tratar de resolver las, las, las decisiones. ¿Qué quiere hacer usted? Sí, lo ponemos en... You want to table it. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to table right. the item. No, ma'am, uh, the, the hearing is, is already done. Second. You have a second? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, next item. Amending the zoning ordinance of the city of Laredo by rezoning lot 119, D, block 3, San Isidro, uh, Southwest, Antler Crossing Subdivision, phase 5, located at 9802 Springfield, 
from a B board or an R2. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, we have the applicant, Derry Properties, LSC owner, Roberto Ramirez Gomez, applicant representative, property location, Flat 119B, Block 3, San Isidro, Southwest Antler Crossing Subdivision, Phase 5, located at 9802 Springfoot Avenue, zone, zone change B4 to R2, proposed use multifamily, letter sent 3, none for, none against. Location view. Aerial view. It's lagging, it's giving me long with it. It's bouncing off of plexiglass. <laughs> we have the uh, street view, sir. Zoning map. Future land use map. And the recommendation is staff support. Okay. And the proposed motion. This is a public hearing. Anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the zone change, in favor of the zone change. Good evening, uh, Mr. Ramirez, who is the applicant for Ray Properties, um, was in not able to attend today. My name is Lisa Maria Estrada, and I'll be representing them, um, and I'll be answering their questions to the best of my knowledge. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a question for you. Yes. The proposed apartments that you're proposing, uh, how many stories? Um, we have two buildings. One of them is a three-story building, and the other one is a two-story. The three-story, um, I believe, will have um, the elevator included. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are set up right next to a residential district that is already established? Yes, correct. What kind of buffering are you going to use in between the two stories mm -hmm. and the three stories mm -hmm. from looking into the residential units? Um, I'm sorry, at the moment I don't have an answer for your question. That would probably be a question to Mr. Ramirez. Like I mentioned before, he was not able to um, assist today. Okay, because you do know what, what I'm talking about, right? The yes, height. yes, correct, yeah. And so obviously, I mean, a lot of the residents that are already there don't know this is coming. This is a and they didn't know that this was coming before. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's something that needs to be looked at is in terms of Distance from property line, I know what the minimum distance is, but is it going to be further away? Is there going to be, what kind of a buffer will, are they going to use uh, just because of an existing residential R1? Yes, I do know that the concept of these um, multi-homes is for them to be minimal. Um, we do not want to create anything that's going to uh, create a lot of traffic or for them to be a lot of uh, families living in these um apartments we're looking to create between 20 to 25 at the most um there we're looking for them to be spacious and uh to incorporate um for them to be pet friendly so we are uh looking to do a lot of uh, green space so we can accommodate if we do have to uh, make sure that we have those um uh, we meet the line requirements for the property uh, with that green space that we want to do okay Will there be any windows on the residential side to the where the single family houses are? Um, I don't know if you know about the, the designs already done or not. This is obviously just zoning, but right. it, it is something that we have to look at because of the existing residents are already there to be fair for them too. Correct, yes, yeah. And the, it's a beautiful um, neighborhood. It's a developing neighborhood. Um, and we are taking in consideration all, the, all of that and of course, what we're trying to do is trying to create uh, another option for uh, smaller families to be able to uh, live in, you know, in this um, really nice neighborhood. So. Right. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Yes, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Um, the size of the property, it's, uh, it's less than two acres. Mm -hmm. Actually, according to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the information that we have, uh, I would like before I would vote on it to see what for the, uh, the owner and developer to present Concept. what they're going to build on it. 
You're correct. We had a lot of problems in that area. Actually, some of the uh, of the land along Springfield has not been developed because that if, if it was to be developed, it would overlook the subdivision on the site. It's still undeveloped. Now, we have a subdivision right to the side of this property, and also we have a B4 in the back. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a multifamily right next to an R and also to a B4. I would... And it's a small. It's a small area. Actually, the what you have is only about a about an acre and a half. Yeah. If you're going to go ahead and look where you're going to put all the parking, you have no other choice but to build up. Mm -hmm. So you're right. I mean, what they're presenting is, and we're going three story. Yeah. Because they have a problem with the parking. So that being said, uh, I personally would like to table this item uh, until we know or we get something up to what's going to be built up. Not that we stop them. Yeah. And I many times I say, well, it's only a zone change, mm -hmm. see? But in this particular case, it's going to be a multifamily. If it was to be like 10 acres, uh, I wouldn't mind. But an acre and a half, I would like to know what's going to happen there. Yeah, so, definitely. I, would, I, would, I do have a question for you, for staff, just, just to clarify. A minute, just a minute. Let me, let me have Mr. Dominguez finish, please. Okay. I will recognize you as soon as he finishes. Right. So that being said, uh, I think that the best way to do it and handle this zone change is to actually have what what the uh, what the developer wants to build in that area. That's the end of my comment. Uh, All right, Mr. Chair, Mr. Barone. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, it's currently a B4 now. Is that correct? That's correct. So, I mean, the property owners, if they would have done the due diligence, they would have known that the property next door to them is a B4 now. The reason this has changed is because it had been planned out for something totally different than what it is now. Is that correct? That's correct. It was supposed to be a mall or something like that. Right. Well, that was supposed to be planned here, but things have changed. So currently, I mean, what's the height that someone they can do right now as a B4 that they can go up on this property? There's a lot of high, high end use on that. This on property. that, on this business, on yeah. this lot. So also, I believe we also have next to it, the B4 next to it, uh, they're coming in with a, a complex with a, uh, Apartment complex, uh, town or uh -huh. condominium uh -huh. condos. Uh -huh. right. They're coming with condos next door to it. Right. So, uh -huh. so I'm surprised. So, in a B4, you you cannot do multifamily. That's that's, that's the only reason they're here, right? If right. not, they would have that's been. Correct. So, but they can do other more intense uses mm -hmm. right now in a B4, including a bar if they wanted to. Absolutely. So, and yeah. one of the things that I would. Uh, I understand what you're saying. What you have in front of you is a zone cape, right? And so it, the, the action to be taken is whether to approve the zone or not approve the zone. Um, we don't, in the application process, we don't ask for the full-blown design plans for something like this, right? Granted, so I, I understand. I, I and, you, and usually it's the other way around. They want to be for instead of going coming back to it, less uh, risk. And, and, and that's perfectly all right. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Okay, Rodney. Uh, that's perfectly all right. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to make a vote uh, well, on this item. Let me continue with the public yes, hearing, sir. and then we'll get to it, okay? Yes, Thank sir. you very much for your presentation. Can I add uh, just a comment? Yes. Um, we have already invested a lot of uh, time on this property and the thinking. We do have plans already already available. I can just make a call and have them you know, email to me. Um, what we want to do is we want to create a really nice and uh, enjoyable neighborhood. So that's what we're trying to do. And we'll, from that, we know that it takes a team to make a good uh, neighborhood. And that's like they mentioned before on the reasoning on the, the previous zoning. Um, so yes, we're, we're here in, for that support as well. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else here who wants to speak in favor of the zone change? In favor of the zone change? Anybody who wishes to speak against the zone change? Against the zone change? All right. If not, what are the wishes of the commission? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to deny the zone change and, uh, and to close, well, actually to close the public hearing and deny the zone change. So. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. I make I a motion to approve, uh, approve the uh, and go with staff recommendation. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Okay.
Okay, so the motion does not pass either because there's five. You need uh, for the motion to pass is you just a plural or you need five? Well, the quorum, mm. the majority. Or, uh, the majority? Majority. So then the zone change passes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, zone change passes. All right. The next item is amending the zoning ordinance of the city of Laredo by authorizing the issuance of a special use permit for a restaurant selling alcohol on lot one, block 1A, Delwood Commercial <laughs> Subdivision, located at uh, 1001 Bristol Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, we have the applicant, Gilberto Sanchez, owner, Javier Adrian Gonzalez, applicant representative. Property location, lot one, block 1A, Delwood Commercial Subdivision, located at 101 Bristol Road. Zone change, um, special use permit for a restaurant serving alcohol, proposed use, restaurant serving alcohol. Letter sent 15, none against, none for. Location view. Aerial view. Street view. Zoning map. Future land use map. And the recommendation is staff does not support. And the proposed motion. All right. This is a public hearing. Anybody who wishes to speak in favor, in favor of the uh, special use permit? Yes, sir. Buenas tardes a todos. Buenas tardes. Uh, una disculpa, hablo más español que inglés. Está bien. No hay problema. Los eh, podemos ayudar. Mi nombre es Javier Adrián González Rendón. Estoy dispuesto para cualquier duda o aclaración al respecto de la zona. Nada más que quisiera decir algo un poquito a, acerca de mi negocio. Tengo seis años aquí en Laredo. Mi negocio nació en Laredo. Gracias a Dios hemos ido poquito a poquito. Este, estoy muy agradecido con la zona. Es una zona familiar. Este, la que pues ya me conocen todos, ¿verdad? Personalmente atiendo el negocio. Este, me encantaría que me dieran la oportunidad de crecer un poco más y seguir ofreciendo pues, empleos a, a la misma gente de Laredo y de la zona más que nada, porque mis trabajadores todos son de la zona. Entonces, cualquier duda estoy a su disposición. Este, le iba a preguntar a usted, sí. ¿usted este, entendió que no se está recomendando el Special Use Permit por la razón de que no cumple con los 300 pies de una escuela, un daycare, es parte de lo que las ordenanzas que están aquí en la ciudad ahorita? ¿Usted sabía eso? No. No sabía. No. Porque ese es uno de los requisitos y no sé si, si le viene explicado eso a usted, ¿verdad? De que no llegó la distancia. Hay una distancia de 300 pies que tiene que estar de puerta a puerta. Y en el caso de usted, para que le den la licencia para que sirve para alcohol, ¿verdad? No tiene usted la distancia necesaria bajo la ordenanza en la ciudad ahorita. Ok. Este, y nomás uh, quería que... Te, muy bien. Yo sabía, no sé si... Por eso le pregunto, ¿verdad? Porque, porque aparentemente... Se me decía que no, 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 que no, no sabía. Este, oh. Lo que pasa es que me estaba apoyando una persona anteriormente, pero la verdad no, no estaba muy, no lo hacía muy bien, ¿verdad? entonces preferí, vamos a decir, trabajar por mí mismo. Por trabajar este, solo. Exacto. Uh, ¿Será por el daker que hay a, a un lado? Exacto, atrás? Okay. exacto. Sí. Muy bien. Ellos tienen hora de operación muy temprano, pero si no se puede hacer absolutamente nada, estoy a la disposición, no voy a hacer algo que no deba Siempre he hecho las cosas bien, todo, no debo nada de impuestos, no debo nada, absolutamente nada. Estoy al corriente, si algo eh, rompería en alguna ley, estoy dispuesto a, a no hacerlo. Sí, Pero me encantaría crecer, es lo que, es lo que quisiera hacer. Okay. Uh, ¿Any questions? Uh, yes, sir. Este, sí. Ahorita el, el, ustedes están en el lado de, de la calle, este, not of Mind Road, it's the other way. Bristol, Bristol, Bristol. 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 Y, y ahorita cuánto tiempo tiene su, uh, su negocio ahí? Yo tengo seis años. Seis años de, de snack and, and grill. Y, y lo que quería ahorita, la razón es porque quería vender alcohol ahí. Sí, pero no la, la grande de vender licor y todo eso, simplemente es algo con las para comidas. acompañar con el alimento. Yeah. Este, enfrente de mí tengo dos stripes. Incluso traigo un video donde le tomé 360. Porque en una esquina está Stripe, en otra esquina está Stripe, mm -hmm. en la otra esquina estoy yo. Entonces, no es algo que, que está... Ahora, no quisiera mencionarlo tampoco como muy remarcado, pero está exóticas a dos cuadras. Entonces, yo estoy pidiendo algo familiar y a dos cuadras. Entonces, 
yo creo que, que mi, mi negocio es totalmente más noble y con familia que ya conozco y la gente me conoce a mí, mis niños también este, están en el negocio, entonces es algo familiar, no pienso hacer un, un bar, alguna cosa, simplemente acompañarlo para tener un poquito más de ingresos, porque sí se vio un poquito afectado con el virus, con lo que ustedes quieran, yo creo que todos los negocios de la región, entonces. So, so ahorita en su restaurante este puede, puedo ir, pero no hay cervezas no. o nada de eso, es pura la, la comida. Y anteriormente ya había habido, el dueño, el propietario me dice que él mismo había tenido un billar, pues hace 15 años, ¿verdad? Porque esa propiedad tiene mucho, mucho tiempo, Gilberto Sánchez, Gilco Homes. Este, ya vendía cerveza y vendía de todo, ¿verdad? Mm. Pero yo ahorita pues nada más es para complementar, no es para ser un bar o para hacer algo. Incluso si hay algún límite de tres cervezas, pues nada más es para acompañar, no es para que vayan a, a sentarse y otra cosa. Yeah. ¿Y su restaurante, eh, la cocina que tiene, es comercial o qué tipo de cocina tiene? Sí, es todo acero inoxidable, cumpliendo con todas las reglas de bomberos. Tengo ya, tengo autorizado mis inspecciones ah. al pie. Este, el bombero pues va, no sé, cada 10, 12 meses a revisar. O todos los inspectores, tengo todos los permisos, no tengo nada fuera de la ley ni nada. Cumplo okay. con todos los requerimientos. ¿Qué clase de comida sirve usted ahí? Comida mexicana sir, y lo que es este... Traigo un menú en blanco y negro. ¿no? De, de, este, comida mexicana y snacks. O lo puede poner ahí en el... Está en blanco y negro, disculpen por no traerlo ahí. No tiene que ver nada. Uh, lo que ve ahí son tostadas sí. Siberia, este, lonches, hamburguesas, taquitos de carne asada, enchiladas, gorditas burritos, pues es comida corrida. También van muchos niños porque vendo raspas, vendo fritos, flammy hot, entonces es una totalmente familiar, no busco hacer otra cosa, ni fuera de la ley para nada. Okay. <coughs> Any questions? Anybody else? No. Uh, yes, uh, if, no, 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 unable to provide services. I personally feel that we should grant it, and then he can deal with, uh, with, uh, with the Texas Alcohol Commission. If he doesn't get it, he doesn't get it. I feel that, uh, in all fairness, yeah. we should provide the, uh, the condition use permit to this, at least that's the way I think. Okay. And then he can deal with it. If they don't give him the license, it's up to them. Can I make a quick comment? Um, I, lo voy a decir en español para que entienda. Oh. Esta locación no es una locación perfecta y entiendo que su negocio es un negocio uh, primordialmente de, de comida. No es un bar, pero como dice usted, tiene niños que a veces van y comen ahí, tiene un daycare que está cerca. Y a como yo entiendo el proceso de TABC, si nosotros lo aprobamos, ellos lo aprueban. Ellos no van y ellos no checan la distancia ni hace ningún tipo de, de research eh, para ver si es un lugar apropiado. Y como le digo, yo sí creo que es un muy buen lugar para esto, pero a mi opinión, si no cumple con la regla principal, que es la distancia a los niños, a las escuelas, para mí como es algo que no deberíamos de aprobar. Ok. Uh, if I can make a comment to Commissioner Villarreal, real quick. I think, I think we know everybody's okay. sentiments Then, on this. All right. Okay, Let me continue with the public hearing. All right, and then yes, we'll sir. take it forward. Bueno, muchas gracias. Okay, ¿podría comentario? agregar un poquito más? ¿Mande? ¿Podría agregar algo un poco más? ¿Seguro? Bien. Ah, eh, el Laker, le puedo decir que tiene muy poca operación. De hecho, ha estado a punto de cerrar dos o tres veces y estuvo cerrado hace tiempo. Este, no quiero ser más personal, decir que no le veo que dure todavía un poquito más porque incluso tiene problemas con el propietario, con todo eso, y yo jamás he tenido ningún problema ni de pagos, ni de nóminas, ni de, ni de impuestos, ni nada. Okay. Y ese negocio yo lo veo muy pronto a cerrar. Okay. Claro, no quisiera tampoco no, no. señalarlo ni nada, quisiera sí, sí, que sí. le dieran para adelante y que le fuera muy bien. Claro. Okay. Pero sí me encantaría que me apoyaran o que hicieran alguna excepción, porque sinceramente no es hacer algo malo, ni nada. es simplemente agregar un poquito más de variedad al menú. <coughs> Es, es para la misma gente de, de esa área. Ok. Yeah. 
Muchas gracias. Anybody else who wishes to speak in favor of the special use permit? In favor of the special use permit. Anybody who wishes to speak against the special use permit? Against the special use permit. All right. What are the wishes of the commission? I just had a quick question, Mr. Mr. Chairman, for staff. I had a question Go for right staff. Go right ahead. Um, just if this were a B4, like there are other properties near the vicinity that are B4s, mm -hmm. would he be able to sell alcohol here? So the only reason that the, the ordinance talks about the distance from the school. Uh, we're not here to, to judge the character of the person or the type of business. We, I mean, I'm sure he's doing a very good job. Right. And, and it's, a, it's a nice restaurant. Everything's working well. The ordinance is what it is near, near the school. That's all we're dealing with here. Right. Okay. Uh, but by no means are we trying to, you know, uh, characterize this, this business owner as, as doing bad business. No, I think he's doing very well. Right. I'm just saying if, yeah. if, if, or if he were to come in for his own change instead of an SUP to a B4, would that help him with the distancing or it's still going to be that? Still, it's still, it's okay. still a special use permit for alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. What are the wishes of the commission? I'll make a motion to approve the, uh, the special use permit, uh, Mr. Chairman. Second. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those against? Aye. One against. Motion carries. Approval. Next item. Amending the zoning ordinance of the city related by authorizing the issuance of a condition use permit for an auto body shop in the south one half of lot three and four and also being uh, partially out of lot two and three, block 36 Eastern Division located at 1216 Logan Avenue and 717 Laredo Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, we have applicant Oscar and Laura Sedna, owners and applicants. Property location, south one half of lot three and four, and also being partially out of lot two and three. <sighs> Block 36, Eastern Division, located at 1216 Logan Avenue and 717 Laredo Street. Zone change, condition use permit for a body shop. Proposed use, COP for a body shop. Letter sent 24, one against, none for. Location view. Street view. This is of Logan Avenue. Street view of Laredo Street. Zoning map. This is land use map. And the recommendation is staff support. And the proposed motion. If I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, before you open up the public hearing, just a little, a little history. This item had come forward to this commission uh, for a zone change to be for, and also uh, one of the issues was that uh, <coughs> the land was not big enough. But at that meeting, um, the applicant, Ms. Serna, uh, spoke about she did have more land so that was one thing and then the commission asked that she come back for conditional use permit and apply for conditional use, which she has she's been very patient with us in, in what she's done i think i've seen her there several times at the office so um but she did come back with all the paperwork so i just want to give you an update of how okay. it triggered her to come back very good thank you this is a public hearing anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the conditional use permit yes ma'am yes hi Again, thank you very much for having me for the second time. I know it's late, so thank you for hearing my proposal. As Mr. Navarro said, this is Just my second minute. Before time. Before you get started, can you please state your name for the record? Oh, yes, my name is Laura, Laura Serna. Um, I can speak English or Spanish, whichever. English is I'm, fine. Oh, okay, great. And um, <coughs> I've submitted all my applications. I've submitted... Um, <coughs> floor plans, site plans for what we want to do. I don't know if, if, do I? If you have them with you, you can show them on the overhead. That way the commission can see it. Uh, yes. Okay. And um, I, well, personally, I think it's going to be, it's not going to be an eyesore. It's going to be, everything will be state of the art. Uh, we will be um, in, I think enhancing our 
um, district, our community. Okay. Want, oh gosh, I don't know if it's the whole thing there. Um, the, the district, the community, we will be hiring uh, people, of course. Gracias, que amable. Um, we will be hiring, of course, uh, people from here from Laredo. So we will be generating jobs. And um, I think the property, we have a B4 right across the street and right, right <coughs> next to us. We also have the B4. It's only us that we don't have it. And this is a conditional use. And, and here are, um, okay, well, let me, I hope everything is turned out fair. I don't know. And um, and like I said, it's it. I personally think it's going to be great. Like I said, for the community, for generating jobs, starting with the construction, and then with with the hiring of the personnel, and also um, I think it's going to look very nice. The neighborhood would look a lot better. And like I said, we do have the, the B4 right across the street and right next to us. And um, this, oh, well, I don't know if you need to see this, but this is like the, the elevations. And this is like three, three of the frontal views that um, I'm not sure which one we would okay. want, you know. But we do have everything in order. I've okay. done everything that I've been asked to be uh, doing. Okay. And like I said, I do appreciate the time and effort that everybody has given my husband and you. All right. Does anybody in the commission have any questions? I have a question for staff, Mr. Chef. Okay. I have a question for Ms. Emma. Okay. Well, yes. Let, let me take this there. question over here first. Go ahead. Just real quick before you go and sit. Uh, what you have labeled as a uh, new building that's going to be enclosed, right? All the repairs are going to happen oh. inside of an oh, enclosed yes. building. Yes, ma'am. It's all enclosed. Everything. Okay. It's it's a great design. It it's it's awesome, actually. Okay. Thank you. That was my only you're, question. Yes, you're welcome. Commissioner Dominguez. Uh, Mr. Uh, Navarro. Yes. The body shops are authorized in what zone? B four. B four. Okay which is what initially she came in with zone change for before the the main the main problem that i see is not the beauty of the building but actually the the emission and the control of any type of contamination on the neighboring residential area at one time mr chairman just to put it on the on the on the record the, the body shops needed to comply with the specific codes and on the contamination because it was creating problems yeah. for the yeah. residential yeah. now. Oh, yes, we have all that. The, right. The, so I don't. I, I think under, under your design, your paint shop meets all the EPA requirements. Yes. Is that correct? Oh, of course. Yeah, because that's, that's part of the, the rule that you're right. Everybody in the past did not have the filtering system required on the paints, and that was causing problem in other areas. I remember having to deal with several of those. Yes. I just want to add yes. on that particular conditioning that it fully complies with it, the... Uh, actually, when they do construction, the building department has to approve, okay? That's because that's part of a, an EPA requirement for this type of business, and the building department would have to approve yes. these plans. Yes, sir. Uh, and stuff. That was my comment right there. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions? No. Yeah. no if nobody has any questions, I'll make a motion. Okay. Thank you very much. Not yet. Let me finish the vote. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you very much. All right. Anybody else who wishes to speak in favor of the conditional use permit? In favor. Anybody wishes to speak against the conditional use permit? Against the conditional use permit? All right. Just one last comment. If you were to look at the comments, uh, comment number 12, uh, we wrote in there, owner shall comply with all building, fire, and safety code regulations mm -hmm. as required. Yeah. It's, it's part so of Hopefully that. It's, it's an EPA requirement now for all paint shops. So, okay. All right. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, those against? The motion carries. Thank you. All right, the next item is amending the zoning ordinance to the city of by authorizing the issuance of a conditional use permit for a car lot on approximately 1.01 acres of land uh, being out of a portion of 1.418.65 acre track conveyed onto Trotman Investment Properties. Uh, and this is situated uh, at uh, International Boulevard and East McPherson Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, we have Trotman Investment Properties owner, Fabrizio Canavati, applicant representative. Property location, approximately 1.01 acre track of land located north of International Boulevard and east of McPherson Road. We have his own change request for condition, conditional use permit for a car lot, proposed use CUP for a car lot, letter sent 24, one against, none for. We have location view. Aerial view. Street view, zoning view, future land use map, and the recommendation is staff supports, and the proposed motion. Okay. All right, this is a public hearing. Anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the conditional use permit? In favor. Uh, one note, uh, Rick Villarreal uh, represents this, the, the engineer represents this. He is um, quarantined at home at the moment, so he did call in earlier today to say that he, he, he understands that you like to see him here, but he was just having problems. If there's any questions, I can call him on his cell phone. Uh, he's available for any questions if you have any questions for the engineer. This is a public hearing. Anybody wishes to speak in favor? All right. Anybody who wishes to speak against? All right. Staff, have any questions? Mm -hmm. I mean, staff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I do have a, a question here. Yes. I don't see um, hours of operation as far as here. I know the school's right next to this establishment, so uh, I, I don't know how much traffic this, this business is going to generate, but I know their current hours are operation for this type of business, or this business, if it's the same owner as the one on... Saunders is 9.30 to like 7 or 8 or something, which is okay because it starts off a little bit later in the day yeah. and it allows that a lot of morning traffic to get through. Um, I don't know if the applicant would have had an issue with, with the hours of operation for as a condition, um, since it's already those hours that he, that, he, that he does. I don't know if we can add that yes. as an additional comment. I don't know if staff would be, be okay. We can with. add that if the if, uh, commission so chooses. And then I, the other question was, um, I know we have um, signage is limited to that allowed in a, B3, in a B3 or, yeah. So it's currently a B1. What's the, I'm just, my question is, what's the difference between B1 and B3 signage that, um, that they wouldn't, would be able to stay with the B1 signage and be okay with it? Or do they really want the B3 signage? Or how big of a change is that? It goes by the, the, the width of the, the, the property. There's a measurement to it, but um, you could, we could, uh, I've noticed there's a trend up there for monument signs. Mm -hmm. So that can be something to put on. If you look down the street, you see the signs are much lower in that particular area. Mm -hmm. That's a condition that if you would like to put it, I'm not suggesting do it, but if you would like something like that. Yeah, maybe that, the sign is a little bit lower just because of, of that, <laughs> of that, again, because of the school next to it is, is the concern there with signage kind of overbearing the, the ability to get into this campus. Um, so I don't know if that's something the commission would like to consider. Um, really, it was, it was on the signage and, and the hours of operation as well. Okay. Very good. Anybody else have anything? No. I, I think that, uh, that that car lot is appropriate for that area. Yeah. I think it uh, would be better than that, having a, a bar and change it to a B3 or B4. Mm -hmm. Keeping the B1 <coughs> and giving the condition the permit, uh, actually, we limit that. I think it's. Yeah, I agree. I, I think so too. I mean, and, uh, I think uh, most of these car lots usually open up about what, what nine o'clock, ten o'clock, nine thirty, nine o'clock. Yeah, so I, I don't see anything wrong with with the adding that hours condition. of operations. Right. And, and, and I'm not signs, really sure. Yeah. The only thing I'm not really sure is on the the item that you brought up on the signage. They are under this particular 
conditional use permit, they will be allowed signage of a B3? Is that okay. correct? Of the underlying uh, zone. zone. Yeah. Okay. okay. They still and have that's, to and that's, I think what, what's happening is most of these signages are not going to the digital, you know, type stuff. Yeah. And that's okay. I don't see an issue with that either because, I mean, obviously there's a site distance between signage that has to be taken into account. And that is determined by the building department when they bring in plans for, for. They have to comply with the They have to comply with, with all the distance requirements and everything. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, what are the wishes? I'm sorry, one more question. Orly, did they mention anything about customer parking for, I know it's a car lot, so they have so many spaces for their cars, but how much is designated for customers to park? Just because you don't want any spillage, I mean, there's not really anywhere to park other than inside that lot. Well, unless you, you go off into the uh, the school site. Well, no, you can't. No, I don't think you you can't. You cannot park anywhere else other than in that business to go to that business. Because it's mostly private. And yeah, I think that's you can't. Close okay, yeah. it's private. Yeah, and you cannot go into the school site because you have to walk across the bridge. Uh, there's a drainage channel. Right. So no. And I think they have a gated. Yeah, you, you can't. They, they can. No, you, you can't do that. No, no, it has to be within the property. Within the property. Yeah. yeah. And again, that goes back to when they go get a building permit, they will have to show the number of spaces. And exactly. Based on the building size. On the size. And on all that. Yeah. Right now, I'm counting on the They don't have a choice. 56 the, uh, the United uh, Entrance, that's private. That's and right. on McPherson, they, they that's can't right. park. Yeah. So it has right. to be in. No, they, it has to be in. in so. Got it. All right. What are the wishes of the commission? I'll make a motion to approve All the right. use permit. With the uh, addition of the uh, time. Yes. The hours of operation. Cool. With the addition of the hours of uh, operation as stated by Commissioner Barron. All right. Which was? Uh, I think it was 9.30 to 8 o'clock. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Do we have a second? Yeah. Second. 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 <laughs> I know you had second the motion. All right, uh, thank you. All, right. All those no in storm. favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those against, motion carries. Thank you. The next item is preliminary consideration of the following preliminary plat. Preliminary consideration of the replat of lot eight and the west one third of lot seven, block 386, Eastern Division, located at, I'm sorry, division into lot 8A, block uh, 386, Eastern Division, being 10 is residential. Yes, Mr. Chairman, for the record, applicant is Veronica. Is yes. Veronica Ser Solis, Engineers, Druid Engineering, um, Ricardo La Ramos. Proposed use is residential, and the zoning for this one lot development is R3. Location view. Aerial view. Street view. The proposed plot. Comments from planning. Water and utilities. Parks and leisure. And the proposed motion. All right. Mr. Chairman, just for, uh, for the record, uh, I know that the last meeting, there was a lot of frustration as far as whether we would have representation here from the city. And uh, that was a request you had made as a, as a group 
we made that request. That was taken to the city manager. And uh, I'd like, I'm happy to say that with us today, we have uh, engineering, traffic, and our utilities department directors in the audience today. Uh, and they do support the idea of being here, right? Yes, there they go. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I went out on the limb of that one. <laughs> Well, you know, first of all, I'd like to thank you. Like Courtney says, to us it was very important because a lot of times we have plaques coming forward, and an engineer is challenging what your department is is stating, and we have no way of knowing whether what he's telling us and what you guys are stating, you know, we needed somebody to give us some guidance. So we did make that request of, of the city manager. I talked to the city manager myself. Uh, because there are items that come up and we need guidance from the department directors uh, who are better suited to be able to guide us when there is a conflict between the engineer and, the, and your comments. So I want to thank you all for, for coming because we are trying to do our best to approve something that is in the best interest of the community. And without your technical knowledge and expertise, it becomes a little harder for us. So, thank you. With that being said, uh, does anybody have any questions on this particular item? All right, if not, what are the wishes of the commission? Make a motion to approve subject to staff comments. Okay, we have a motion, second, and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Next item is the preliminary consideration of the plat of Hector Adame. Uh, and the granting of a variance with a lot width from 46 to 35 and the lot size from 6,000 square feet to 5,800. The intent is residential. Yes, Mr. Chairman, for the record, applicant is Hector Adame, engineer is Juret Engineering, Ricardo Ramos, proposed use is residential, and the zoning for this one lot development is R1. Location view. Aerial view, street view, the proposed plat, comments from planning, Waters, water and utilities, Parks and leisure, and a proposed motion. Okay. The engineer of record here. <clears throat> uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Ricardo Ramos, and I'm here to answer any questions on this uh, proposed uh, plat, preliminary plat. I have one question for you. I know that uh, the way you're presenting the plat is a 35 foot frontage. Uh, is that because that's all the land that's available, or, or is that? Yes, if, if you can see, basically the, the 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 same scenario is uh, I guess happening on the on the adjacent properties. They sold all these properties with a 35 foot uh, windage. So when my client uh, came up and I told him, well, we can't do this. I said, I don't know if you can build a house in this in this lot, but uh, he did show me a plan that that he can actually build a residential lot. I mean, a house in this yeah. lot. So with that, I know it was it was uh, zoned R1, but I mean, I, I don't think any of those lots, well, any of those three lots would comply with R1s. So that's what we asked for the variance request. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I had a question. I know if, I know when I saw this, I was trying to see what other zones this lot could possibly fit, right? So you would think maybe because of the square footage, but that would be an R1A, but the difficult part of this lot R1B. is meeting meeting the, the lot width, but an R1B would work, but that's only for new development, right? So that's why we couldn't recommend the R1B at right. this point. So it's either... Well, know, right now, this. what it is, it's a flat. It's not a zoning issue. It's right. a flat. Right. So there's two different issues, okay? The zoning right. is one and the platting is another one, and we're right. just looking at the platting issue of this thing. Right. And currently, because it doesn't meet the requirements of of, of the of the zone right 
Right. It has to meet the, the certain it width. Has, it needs a variance. Right. It needs this variance, which we can we can do. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if R one Bs were allowed, other than in new developments, that could be can he would meet this. Well, R R one B can be allowed. It's his own change. They can come back and apply for. But only for new developments. I don't think for existing. Yeah. For new developments. That's correct. That's why we're here today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, does anybody else have any questions? <coughs> Thank you very much. What are the wishes of the commission? I make a motion to uh, approve uh, the, I, the 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 plot with the variance. Okay. A motion a second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those against? The motion carries. Thank you. The next item is the consideration of the final plans, and this is the final consideration of the plan of La Divisiones Subdivision Unit 10, the intended residential. I'll tell you what, it's a final plan, so there's they're recommending so, approval. Is that correct? It's a motion. All right, do we have a motion uh, for approval? Motion to approve. And do we have a second? Second. second. And a second. Uh, All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Motion. motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Be safe.